straight out of the land of 10,000 lakes in her ruby red slippers. It's Nicole Blessing. your mouth out with 
So, <laughs> yeah, things get interesting with my Norwegian friend. Yeah, he's got this kimchi lutefisk fusion recipe that is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> now, I know some of you are dying to try lutefisk, but you're going to have to wait until December and get it from the sons of Norway and Van Nuys. <laughs> That is what Christmas is in Minnesota. It is ludicrous, bulky sweaters, and guilt. And there is no escaping it. Everybody remember Purple Rain? Yeah. Yeah, that's all true. We all have to purify ourselves in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> and we're all issued a Norwegian sweater at birth. And it is the best sweater you will ever have. But it does get revoked if. You know, you complain about how cold it is in another state. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I still have mine. So I met my husband, Fred, in Minneapolis. You know, I had heard all these horror stories about dating in LA, like how living on opposite sides of the 405 is just a deal breaker. Okay. Yeah, so I decided to just do all my dating in Minneapolis, which was not without its pitfalls. I dated the guy once who told me that um, I was part of the bourgeoisie for not owning a rice cooker. Uh, yes, I, I share your confusion with his flawed logic. I, I don't know. He wasn't from Minnesota. He was originally from Chicago. Uh, another guy I dated in college actually named his kid Beckett. Yeah, dodged a bullet there. <laughs> no one wants to scream Beckett during sex. You're basically invoking the father of existential dread. Yeah. He's waiting on an orgasm and be like, waiting for the go. <laughs> but the true low hanging fruit of intellectual elitism is naming your kid Schrodinger. Did you put Schrodinger to bed, Karen? Yes and no. <laughs> so in, in LA, you know, geography plays a huge part of dating. But in the Midwest, people don't seem to realize how much weather plays a part in dating. I mean, when it is January and 30 below, no one is going out without plans. <laughs> you don't go to a bar just for the hell of it. You look at each date and you think, is it worth it? Is he park up worthy? <laughs> well, my husband Fred did turn out to be park worthy. Hey. Yes, yay Fred. Uh, yeah, so my father was Catholic. Kept yeah, that a secret, you guys. <laughs> uh, my mother was Methodist, and I married a Lutheran. <laughs> and in the Midwest, that is considered a diverse family. <laughs> <laughs> so Fred and I have been together for 12 years. Go ahead, be impressed. That's like 60 years here. <laughs> And uh, the secret to a good marriage is love, trust, <laughs> and mutually assured destruction. <laughs> yeah, we, we have an open marriage. Yeah, we're open to leading other people on. <laughs> yes, so Minnesotans, we love home shopping parties. Okay, you know, like jewelry, candles, intimate accessories. Yeah, I, I did go to an intimate accessories party once, but I was motivated by the promise of high-end shoes. <laughs> you know, not that Target mid-grade white charm. I mean, we're talking Alpine and, and a, you know, and a nice brie selection. You know, first it wasn't bad. She was good. But then the host brought out one of those over-the-door shoe holders, only it did not have shoes. It was full of vibrators. You know, nothing can prepare you for the high-pressure world of vibrator sales. <laughs> it's like going into Glen Gary, Glen Ross, where only closers get mimosas. <laughs> I mean, women were dropping like three, four hundred dollars on vibrators. <laughs> As a recovering Catholic, I, I just couldn't do it. I mean, you don't just buy a vibrator. You have to buy stuff to clean it, prep it, nurture it into becoming a better vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of maintenance. Maybe even more than keto, and I just don't have that kind of time. <laughs> and ultimately, yeah, I didn't want to do it, but this woman, oh, she would not take no for an answer. What can I do to get one of these into you today? <laughs> <laughs> then it dawned on me, 
my way out. Well, do you have anything larger? <laughs> well, what size do you need? I have everything you could possibly want. Here is where the hubris of the vibrator saleswoman becomes her undoing. <laughs> well, I need at least eight inches. I mean, that's what I have waiting for me at home. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, well, then I will just take this candle and be on my way. <laughs> <laughs> So like everybody's doing a cleanse now, right? You know, like juice, soup, take worm, trying to lose that COVID-15 we all gained. You know, I'm weak, I caved. I'm doing a cheese cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's pretty easy. You know, you drink uh, two glasses of red wine a day, you know, and uh, eat a lot of soft cheese, and then you bask in the glow of your phone. I've never felt so radiant. <laughs> all right, well, I will leave you with a Scandinavian battle cry. Ready? Oh yeah, yeah! I know it's not great, but you know, they did their talking with their battle swords. <laughs> yeah. I hope a blessing, thank you so much. Woo!